the revolt, known as Sicilian Vespers, brought an end to about 4,000 Frenchmen in Sicily. It led to the end of the Angevin rule of the island. Now, like in any movie, we have to go back to find out that one of the heroes who died early on had a secret child who would come back later to avenge the father. The child was Constance, the daughter of Manfred, the last German ruler of Sicily. She was married to Peter of Aragon. For those of you who don't know, Aragon was basically an overpowered Catalonia of medieval ages. Peter and Constance were supported by many Sicilian nobles and commoners. In 1285, Charles died, and his successor now claimed the throne. However, he was a pretty lame ruler. No, literally, he was officially named Charles the Lame. Long story short, both the Aragonese and the French kings claimed the throne of Sicily which at that point also included all of southern Italy. However, both of them gained control over only partial realms of the kingdom. Catalans gained control over the island of Sicily, and the French gained control over the mainland part. However, both of them rightfully claimed the throne of Sicily. Therefore, two Sicilies emerged. Here's Sicily 1, and here's Sicily 2. What? Sicily 2 is not even located on the island of Sicily? Come on, it's the Middle Ages, nobody cares. Anyways, remember the name Two Sicilies, it'll be useful later in the video. The crown of Aragon took control over Sicily. Although at the beginning everything seemed perfectly fine, it became the downfall of the island. Even though Peter of Aragon wanted separate kings to rule Sicily and Aragon, it did little effect and the island still became basically a colony of Aragon. European feudal system overtook the island. The dark side of the Middle Ages had finally touched Sicily. Corruption and persecution became regular. In the mid-14th century, black death led, as the name suggests, to the death of many people. Taxes were raised to an inadequate point. Land of the island was unofficially exploited by Aragonese noblemen. In 1442, under Alfonso V, Naples and Sicily were united again. In these terrible and corrupt conditions, groups of bandits arose developing their own codes and laws. Remember these groups of organized crime, they will be important later in the story. In late 15th century, Castile and Aragon were unified to form the nation of Spain. It inherited all of Aragon's former territories, including Sicily and Naples. Now Spanish wars were ruling all of Inquisition. Oh dear, that wasn't expected. But in all seriousness, the Spanish Inquisition was a terrible thing. While the rest of Europe was enjoying the technological advancement and renaissance, Sicily was being terrorized by the Spanish rule. Any kind of enlightenment happening in Europe meant nothing in Sicily. Region where corruption was the way of life, and where the only thing that mattered was your title, and how much the Viceroy, who doesn't even live in Sicily, likes you. But the Spanish did bring tomatoes. That's probably the only good thing that they've ever done for Sicily. Now it's time to enter the modern era and the 17th century. I wonder what grave achievements and adventures await Sicily this time. Wait, this is hunger, plague, two volcano eruptions, earthquake, drought, famine for a whole century, enormous taxes. Whoa, it doesn't seem like a particularly good time to be born in. In 17th century, everything in Sicily was just awful. As a coincidence, both nature and other people have stricken with all their harshness on the island. In these conditions, organized crime became even more important. In early 18th century, there was almost no proper government. Remember the groups of organized crime I told you about? Well, they started gaining enormous amount of power, and I'm sure you all know what their name is. Um, it, it's the month. Yeah, I mean, I tried to make an epic foreshadowing, but... Okay, don't mind me. As a result of the War of Spanish Succession, Sicily was ceded to the Kingdom of Savoy, located in northern Italy. However, as it usually happens, they weren't the only ones who wanted the island. Savoy invaded Austria, hoping for Spanish help. Instead, the Spanish invaded Sicily to recapture the island for themselves. However, the war ended with the Austrian victory, we decided that a new island wouldn't harm them. This way, Sicily became an Austrian domain. However, it didn't stay so for long. The Spanish annexed the island back. The new kingdom of Naples, however, was somewhat autonomous. Charles, Duke of Parma, became its ruler. The new kingdom also encompassed the island of Sicily. However, it was ruled from Naples and for Naples. It was a great time for Spanish mainland Italy, but not so much for its southern neighbor. In 1782, Inquisition was finally abolished. Soon, Napoleon started annexation of Italy. Charles' successor, Ferdinand, fled to Sicily. 
It remained unannexed by Napoleon during the Napoleonic War while the rest of the kingdom was. It was during that time that Ferdinand II, Ferdinand's grandson, was born in Palermo, who was the first king of Sicily for a long time to be actually born in Sicily. During this time, Sicily was under a large British influence as they protected it from Napoleon. Even a constitution resembling the British constitution was written, but it was cancelled soon. The British also forced Ferdinand to abolish feudalism in 1812. This was a somewhat prosperous time for Sicily as they enjoyed a small economic boom because of sulfur mining. When the French Empire fell, the king returned to Naples. There, he formed the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. At that point, the island was still largely agricultural, while the rest of the Western Europe was striving with industry. The Kingdom of Two Sicilies was short but somewhat pleasant. During these times, it became the strongest nation in Italy. It also made serious achievements, not only on local scale, but also on the global scale. First seismic observatory in the world, longest continuously open opera house in Europe, are all located in the kingdom. Still though, Sicily itself wasn't really benefiting from it much. In 1848, a revolt rose, but it was suppressed by King Ferdinand II. It is time, two Sicilies had the largest army in Italy, and nobody could even hope to invade. This changed, however, with Francis II becoming the king. Being a weak military leader, he wasn't able to sustain the army. A large part of the troops was bribed by the Piemontese. It all added up with the Kingdom of Sardinia Piemont occupying the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. The occupation had been brutal. Revolutions were bloodily suppressed. Opposers were executed. In 1861, the Kingdom of Italy was created under a Savoy royal house. In the following years, Italy was industrializing while Sicily was stuck with agriculture. Sulfur mining, which was one of the island's main non-agricultural activities, was extremely hard and was done in horrible conditions. Multiple rebellions and riots arose in Sicily, but none of them were really successful. In the late 19th and early 20th century, many southern Italians left the country immigrating to the United States of America. At this time, Mafia started gaining especially large amounts of power and was basically ruling half the island. In 1908, an earthquake destroyed most of Messina and about 100,000 people were dead. Even though Kingdom of Italy was supposed to be at least somewhat democratic, the terrible suffrage laws permitted only a small percent of the population to vote. Then, a certain bold dictator took over power in the country and installed a regime that became a horror for most Italians of this time. Fascist Italy included everything bad about the previous Kingdom of Italy and made it worse. Mussolini's laws were often ignored in Sicily and the whole region had been quite disloyal overall. The most power was held by Mafia. They were the ones who supported the opposition of Mussolini's regime. They also supported the Allies during their invasion. It's no surprise that when Allies invaded Sicily, they were welcomed as liberators. Still though, World War II had been very costly. Palermo had been bombed heavily. In 1946, a republic was established in Sicily in the status of an autonomous region. After the war, the island's economy had improved a little bit, but compared to the rest of Europe, it's still at the bottom. Organized crime is still a problem, and corruption is still everywhere. However, 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 however,